morning, church. Amen. Amen. Once again, how is everyone doing? How is everyone doing? Oh, my goodness. Glory to God. This morning, I'm going to just, uh, Brother Abhinash, I'll move a little side, but I'll be still to the camera. I will be speaking. Praise the Lord. Just want to once again go ahead and uh, remind you all uh, that, you know, TLC Denton is coming up, so uh, Pastor has been praying, and uh, Pastor and me now really taking it to the next step to uh, find a place, and we will be really reaching out to people around that area. We will be working closely to see what God would like to do uh, under the Lighthouse Church, Cobell, Texas. We have TLC North, and now we are going to be uh, launching our work into TLC Denton. Those who believe in that, say amen. Three people clapped and seven people, amen. Let's hear everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. This morning, and um, as we have read the scripture portion, I want to speak something really from my heart that, you know, God is speaking to me and to my wife, and that's exactly when I received this invitation from Pastor. I thought I want to share with you all this morning. So, how many of you had a guest home this weekend or the past week? Anyone had a family home? Nobody, at least invite me now this week. Nobody had, yes, 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 few people, I see. And you had some, someone come home and visit you, right? Or not? Yes, yes, yes. And when they, when you decided that, you know, we are going to invite such and such family for dinner or lunch, and I believe you have put that on calendar, start talking to your husband and children, right? And as you started talking, you're also deciding what to cook. Is that right? That's the first thing, right? What to cook, what all the items you want to prepare. And then I think you also started up giving few assignments to your children. All the children say amen. Amen, right? You're going to clean the restrooms. You're going to do the bed. You're going to mop the floor. You're going to clean the sink or, you know, whatever. And uh, I believe there is... A part of that, I go to the store, okay, we had someone come home, so I go to home, I'll forget for sure one thing, it can be cilantro or curry leaves, and then immediately again take myself and then go back and get it back, and then I try to, you know, get everything in place, so that when your guest arrives, right, you want to make sure, you know, everything is beautiful, and then they look at you and they say, Wow, your house is so clean. You, your things are everything in place. Wow, is this always like this? And everyone goes, yeah, 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 yeah. This is always like this. Is that true? I, I don't know, not my house. If you come uninvited, you will see. Dirt cheap store right there. Right? But this morning, I want to use our own, you know, house situation. When we invite someone, how do we prepare? And what are the things that we pay attention to? And how strict we are with our children. I'll be telling my kids, if you touch any toy, you're going to get it. You must not touch any toy until guests come and leave. You play with one toy on one corner. That's it. So we want to present that house and everything in the house beautiful and wonderful as possible as, you know, like a big restaurant, five-star hotel, how they display the thing. And this morning, I want to use my message title. I don't know what to name, Pastor. So I thought, Martha, Mary, and me. Can we all say this? So that you don't think it's about me, it's about you. 
Let's read it together once again, the title. Martha, Mary, and me. So this morning we read two scripture passages. And we read these stories so many times, but, you know, I read this two passages in Greek. I learned a little bit of Greek in my bachelor's and a little bit of Hebrew in my master's. I don't straight up read and understand, but I have tools to read and then understand the original manuscript. So when you read through these stories as an ordinary person, you know, it is very easy for us to lift one person up and put other person down. Any story you take, any situation you take in the Bible, you read it, and you immediately come to a conclusion, oh, bad Martha, wow, Mary, oh, Lazarus. You know, you come to conclusion. So when I was reading this, when, I, when Pastor told me, you're preaching this Sunday, and I read it, you know, I read through so many, you know, paper Bibles. I like to read a paper Bibles, and then I went back, and then I said, let me actually look into Greek, what they wrote, actual script, what did it have? If you read and you understand, it has completely a different uh, meanings to some of the words. So I picked particularly two points today to talk to us from this passage because it is very relevant to us. Because most of the times we pick, we study, and we leave it and go. We think it's not applicable for us. We think it's not to my generation, to them to her, to him, it's not to me. But this morning, I want to bring our attention to some of the details about uh, this story. You see Martha being an amazing woman of God. She is like going up and down, you see. She wants to take care of everything about everything. When Jesus was in town, she was the one running around and getting everything done. When John chapter 11, when her brother Lazarus died, she was the one sent the first message out of her phone. You read the passage. Martha sent a message to Jesus saying, Lazarus is very sick. Please come and heal him. But you know the story. Jesus remains two more days and Lazarus is there. But Martha goes on and on and on. When you go home, please read it. But we are going to focus on just two points. And uh, while Martha is just so focused on getting things done, I need to just do a little prep here, last-minute prep. But when Martha goes, Pastor, I, can I have the fridge, Pastor? When Martha sees that Jesus is coming into town, Luke chapter 10, verses 38, when Jesus came into town, you read in the real, real passage or real manuscript, you see that Luke chapter 10, 38, it says, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. I'm going to just go a little bit of teaching here. I'm very slow. And, uh, you know, when you read it in different scripture passages, right? It says, actually, Martha was the one who ran to the street. When she heard that Jesus is coming to town, she left everything at home. She ran to the street, and she was the one who invited Jesus home. She said, Jesus, please, come home, Jesus, come home. So she invited Jesus home. But in the real, you know, Greek writing, the word there used was received him into her heart. The Greek word for that is upodekomai, meaning, Aman, you can come, meaning to receive him as a guest. Receive him as a guest. You can sit on the chair. You can, you see that when Jesus was in town, Martha called him, and Jesus came, and the word there was, she received him into town, I mean, into her house. And when he came into her house, the word is, pupo de komai, the Greek word, that meaning to receive as a guest. 
Jesus is in her town, I mean, in her house. And he was just a guest. What does a guest do? When you invite a guest, do you take them straight into the bedroom? Do we take them into straight into one of the, you know, uh, rooms that you don't want to? I don't know, you do this. When guests are coming, all my doors are shut. Only one door is open, it's the front door, and they straight go into the couch and sit there. Do you all do that? So you don't do that? We do it at our house. All the doors are shut, make sure everything is tight, locked. Nobody is going into those rooms. You only use two rooms. One is living room, and then the other is restroom if you need to. Because we don't want guests to go into the rooms where there is all the mess. Mess in the sense, nothing bad. Maybe you wash your clothes, you put them in the basket there in that room. It doesn't look nice. Maybe you push some of the things out of the way, you put them in one of the rooms, and you don't want. Maybe that room you did not vacuum, but everything else. Maybe that room you, done, you did not pick up the toys, but everything else. So your guest comes and sits in the living room. That guest has no right to come into any other room. Can you imagine you invite Jesus to your home? And you say, Jesus, this is the throne I built for you. You're going to sit right here. You're not moving anywhere because you are a guest. You're not my savior. You're not my healer. You're not my anything else, but you're my guest. So behave as a guest. Upa dekomai, meaning I'm receiving you as a guest. You're going to be just a guest at home. You're not going to get into any other areas of my life desired Martha that Jesus should come my home, but her desire was only limited to Jesus acting as a guest. It is not right when you read a scripture, you put down Martha. It is not right that when you read this story, you just, you know, make your own conclusions. But how do we deal with this when we invite Jesus into our lives? Do we have the desire that, Jesus, get up and come with me into every room that I want to show you. Get up and come into all the mess I'm going through, and I need your help with the situations that I'm going through. You're not a guest. You're my savior. You're my redeemer. You're my healer. You're my provider. You're my everything. I desire for you to function 100% in my life as Jesus the Christ, the Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Are you all with me? Martha desired, but her desire was only for Jesus to act as a guest. Church, this morning I'm coming with a message that, you know, that sometimes we have to look into our own life that does Jesus take a complete control over my life? Or you invite Jesus as a guest just on Sunday, come and go. Just on life group, come and go. Just on prayer line for 15 minutes, come and go. Or just on women's Bible study, come and go. You're just a guest. Or oh, Jesus, you're with me all the time. And you're not a guest, but you're my family member. And Luke chapter 10, 40. But Martha was distracted. My second D. Distracted. Guest is in the house. I don't know if this happens in your home or not. Guest is in the house. So when my guest comes, you know, I'm trying to just fill them in and quickly step out into the kitchen and help my wife with quickly put, you know, whatever things I need to put and then come back and again fill them in. You know, so much is going on, but guests know nothing about it. Martha was distracted about, you know, Jesus is the guest today. Jesus is in the living room. I'm so sorry, cameraman, today. Please bear with me. Jesus is in the guest room. Jesus is there, everything nice and awesome. You know, Martha put some flowers too from, you know, Sarah's garden, and everything looking good. But Jesus is there as a guest. And Martha here, 
has a whole lot going on in the background that, you know, is the curry tasting right? Did we put cilantro in it? Or uh, did we do the, you know, uh, the right seasoning to all the curries? And do we have plates? And do we have forks and knives and everything? So much of mess. She was distracted. She was distracted while Jesus was in the house. And so she was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. I'm telling you, we profess that Jesus as a living Savior. Jesus as my Savior. Jesus as the King of my life. But so many times, a thing that tests us easily distracts us. Let's look at Martha. She came to him and asked, this is wonderful, I was imagining. So she left all the pressure cooker and all the washing plate, running water in the sink. She left all that and she comes and sees. And she's saying, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do this work by myself? Dramatic, Martha. She's saying, don't you care, Lord? Don't you care? But my sister left all the work to me, and I'm doing everything by myself for you. You know, in our life, sometimes Jesus wants to see that we just leave everything, and you do, Lord. Jesus could have done, if he had, if he had fed 5,000 plus people, he could have done that the entire salt grass would have but Martha wanted to put on a little bit of drama there with the Savior. That don't you care? Don't you care that I am doing everything for you and you are not even letting my sister come and help? Let's see the next deal. Tell her to help me. That's the exclamation mark. Tell her to help me. What is she saying? That demanding. Martha is demanding Jesus that, Jesus, stop what you are trying to talk to Mary, what you are trying to teach Mary. Whatever you have come to do here is, you know, I want to treat you as my guest, but you are completely taken over this service and nobody is there to help me. Please, Jesus, I'm demanding that you tell her to come and help me. You know, all these things will happen as long as we keep Jesus. Is Jesus is a guest in your life? You have a desire that Jesus should be part of my family, my marriage, my finances, my everything I have. But if he is just a guest, then you easily get distracted by everything that comes because he is not the king. Everything that he is, you think guests cannot do anything. I have to handle it by myself. So you get distracted by everything. You become dramatic with everything that is happening. Oh my goodness, I am the only one getting affected by this. Oh my goodness, Pastor, when are you going to just help me with this? Why, why am I put on the spot, Pastor? Why am I doing this, Pastor? You know, you become everything taking onto yourself. And you don't get to see him as a help for you. And not only that, you start demanding Jesus, come on Jesus, it's time for me to experience the breakthrough. Come on Jesus, this is time for me to see whatever I'm, I've been asking for and praying for, believing for. Church, this morning, Martha is not just for the story sake that we can make a conclusion saying, man, look at Martha. But when I was reading, I see myself desire for him to become a king, but I, very often I treat him as a guest. He doesn't have hold on everything. I mean, in Greek, when you say everything, the meaning is everything. Everything. He's not a guest. He's the king. So when the king is home, you don't treat him Yes, but you give him the whole control. And 
any one of us here can stand and testify, that's not me. But truly, if you look down, deep down into your heart, I fall under some of these categories. And we look at, second, Mary, who's going to be with me all day today. So give it up. Today has to be everyone. Appreciate Amar. Thank you, Amar. We're going to look at Mary. Luke chapter 10, 39. She had a sister. Who? Who had a sister? Uh, I'm going to preach only to this group. Who had a sister? Who had a sister? Oh, you can say it loud. She's not here. Say it loud. Who had a sister? Martha. And so she had a sister, Luke chapter 10, 39, a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. So there are so many words in Greek I thought I will pick up, but these only two words, the two words, number one word was received, and second word was who sat at the feet of Jesus and listening to his teaching. The Greek word there is, Parakotaizo, parakotaizo. And the meaning of that is to sit down beside. I will just quickly show you. Don't mind. Okay? If this is Mary, and she is sitting right at the feet of Jesus. She sat down at the feet of Jesus. Beside. If you remember when Martha received Jesus, she is at the background doing all the stuff. But now you see this word sat in Greek meaning sitting beside with Jesus. Sitting beside with Jesus. It has a whole lot of different meaning. This means you are with Jesus, together Jesus, you are part of his team. You are partner with him. You are now belong to his family. Sat with him. Beside. When you are desperate, no matter what is happening in our life, when we are desperate, Mary, out of her desperation, she didn't even care who and what is happening in the house. She sat next to Jesus. I don't know what desperation you're going through, what desperate needs you have in your life. If you keep him as a guest in your life, it's not going to happen. You have to see him as a king, as a child of God, daughter of God, and son of God. You have all the rights to sit right next to him at his feet. Desperate Mary. John chapter 11 Verse 2, it was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. Devoted Mary. Devoted Mary. You know, when you're sitting at the feet, when you're in that desperation, you are even going further. Excuse me. I don't even mind. Please, Lord, holding the feet of Jesus and begging him, when you're desperate. With all the comfort sometimes, it is very hard to go down to the knee. It is very hard to go down to the feet of Jesus. The max I can do is sit on a couch and say, Amen. I'm not picking on anyone, but I'm telling you that Mary sitting down at the feet of Jesus is not a normal thing. But she sat down at the feet. The desperation is, I don't know what was going on in the life of Mary, but she was at the feet of Jesus. And the desperation, that meaning, that she is holding on to his feet. She's not going to leave him. And the number two is that she was at his feet with her hair, wiping his feet. The devotion that she had, had for Jesus, the service that she was offering. Mary, John chapter 12, verse 3, Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment, 
made from pure nerd and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. Dedicated Mary. I don't know if you're paying attention or not. The common thing in chapter 10, chapter 11, chapter 12 about Mary is that she was sitting at the feet of Jesus. And she is holding on to the feet of Jesus. She's not going to let him go anywhere without him doing what she's asking him to do for her. The common thing in these three chapters is that Mary was at the feet of Jesus. Hello, church. Until unless we get down to the feet of Jesus, knowing that he's the king, man, he is the savior, he is my provider, he is the ultimate answer to all my questions I have. He is the ultimate breakthrough that I want to receive in my life. Man, I cannot let this guy go out of my room today. I cannot let him go out of my life. I cannot treat him as a guest. He is the king. Therefore, this king has to be put down by holding on his feet so that I will continue to see his work happen in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. I'm telling you this morning, you know, whatever situation you're going through, right, I'm telling you, do you have that desperation in your life to get to the feet of the king? Or is he still a guest in your life like Martha treated him? Are you, you know, dedicated or devoted yourself to cling on to his feet? This is the difference. When you have a guest, you are working all background stuff. But when you see him as your king, and I am his daughter, I am his son, I have the equal right to reach out to him anytime I needed to. He was the one who brought me out from the darkness into light. He was the one who saved me by going to the cross. He was the one who put his life on the cross to set me free from everything I was facing in my life. No matter what now, I'm not going to leave his feet. Hallelujah, church. This is not to put anyone down, but I want to encourage that if we fall into any of these categories, right, we want to know that how to fix this. Just look at this. Luke chapter 10, 41. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. The good portion of your life, ladies and gentlemen, good portion of your life is find a little gap to get down to his feet. Sickness will not leave you. Financial crisis will not leave you. Job insecurity will not leave you. Bills will never stop. Cars will never run without failing. Our body will never stay like, you know, whatever the, however the way you want it to be. It will never. But in spite of all that, Mary chose a portion to go and sit at his feet beside him. You know what happens if you sit beside him? He will know who I'm talking to. He will know where did I receive the phone call from. He will know my language. He will know what I do when I'm not at church. He will know where do I drive after the work. He will know who all are my friends. He will know how I act when I get mad. He will know how I act when I'm happy. He will know how I act when I don't have money. He will know how I act when I don't have money. He will know every detail of it when you sit next to him. But if you're in the background treating him as a guest, he knows nothing. He's going to enjoy the meal and get out of here. Guest? And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? All this entire story 
of Jesus going to Martha Mary's house in Luke chapter 10. And John chapter 11, Lazarus' death. All these two stories happen, I believe, I'm thinking, just for her to answer that one question. She's asking, do you believe this, Martha? And look at Martha's response. She said to him, what? That's it. Yes, Lord. The moment she said, yes, Lord, what happened? Now, guess turned into her Lord. There's no more a guess. He turned into her Lord. Meaning, what does a Lord do? Lord Saab does everything for you. You have the entire life covered from the beginning to the end. Lord knows your beginning and your end. Lord knows your in between. Lord exists everywhere. She says, all she says, yes, Lord, I believe that. And look at this. Everything changes. This is amazing. I was just reading and then I found this, that John chapter 12, 1, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany. He comes back again where Jesus, I mean, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus has raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Okay? Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Listen to this. If you read Luke chapter 10, 38, receive she received him as a guest. But now, she has a whole another revelation about Jesus coming back, back to Bethany. And the dinner that she was preparing that night was about, all about honoring God. What does it say? Dinner was given in Jesus' honor. It's not like, okay, guests came, eat, all seven items, good, bye-bye, tata. No. This is like now a whole another revelation that Martha is into. That she was doing for the king and she is giving all the honor that was due. Not just in the dinner, but even with her life now she is honoring Jesus. Transformed Martha. I don't know how many of you read, but this was the first time I caught this that all this time, even recently we spoke in youth class about Martha, but we only spoke about how bad Martha was. And when I was preparing, I was reading all the passages that there was Martha, and this passage says that now Martha completely had a whole another revelation about Jesus. She was doing this to honor the king who came back home. Dear church, this morning, you know, as we, you know, put ourselves, as my sermon title is, thank you, Amar, as my sermon title is, you know, Martha, Mary, and me. We cannot leave the place just talking about Martha and Mary and not talk about us. And thank you so much, Amar. And this morning, I want to bring our attention to, you know, do you have that little portion that you get to take off your life and sit at the feet of Jesus? Matthew chapter 6, 28. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet, I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. God was speaking to me from this verse 29 for about almost now two and a half months. Just one verse. I've been, you know, just speaking to my wife and my children about this. They were bored. So bored because I mentioned them on and on and on. Can you believe that Jesus is saying, I know we read, you know, why do you worry? Why is so much of anxiousness about, you know, all this? But we don't pay attention sometime about this one verse, 29th verse. Yet I tell you that not 
not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. Look at this flower. This is going to go away once I throw it out. This is going to wither, dry, and flown away by the trash. And Jesus is saying that the great King Solomon, all the riches that he had, the gold, the horses, the kingdom, honor, wisdom that God himself gave him, all that is nothing in front of this flower. It's saying that Solomon is nothing in front of this flower. And Jesus goes on and on in chapter 6 that I care for you more than this flower. I care for you more than the birds of the air. I care for you more than anything else. You know, many a times it is, it is right on our side that we must you know, take care of the things that are really pressing on in our life. But do you have that little portion in your life that you get to say, it's really tough, honey, but let me sit down at the feet of Jesus and see what he does. Not even King Solomon had what Jesus put on this flower. Psalm chapter 42, 1. As the deer earnestly desires the fountains of water, so my soul earnestly longs for thee, O God. As the deer earnestly desires, earnestly desires. It would be a shame for the Lighthouse Church if pastor comes here and, you know, attend this, attend that, attend do, do this, do this, and then we don't have earnest desire. It's not going to take us anywhere. Because you are just coming and going as a guest. And so, this morning, take home. Martha, Mary, and me. Martha, Mary, and me. Don't let what you have, have you. You all understanding what I mean there? Don't let what you have, have you. I don't know whatever you're going through, but let that be that and continue to seek your king, your savior. Let God be first, God be second, and God be third until your life is continually face to face with God. Let God be first, God be second, God be third until continually your life is in face to face with God. And so, the number th three, you will never come second by putting God first. You will never, you will never come second by putting God first. Dear church, let's stand to our feet. We're going to spend some time in prayer because I seriously feel that we are in a season that God is taking us to wherever we need to be in our life. You know, God doesn't want us to be stuck at one place. And I desire that this morning for me, for my family, and I hope you desire that for you, for your children, for your wife, for you, uh, for your husband, if you're single, for you yourself, for your life and where you're going and what you're going through. And this morning I want you to, you know, close your eyes. And look deep down in your heart. Thank you, Jesus, for Martha. Thank you, Jesus, for Mary. But Lord, now I thank you for myself, that I could put myself in front of the story of Martha and Mary, that one received you as a guest and treated you as a guest. And guest comes and leaves, enjoys the treat and leaves. But when you sit down to honor, recognizing as a king of your life, recognizing you yourself has a right to be the daughter and the son of 
the king then your desperation then your devotion then your dedication really gets honored by the lord and that's what martha saw mary do so john chapter 12 verse 2 says that the second time when jesus came back martha went to whole another level of throwing a party out to jesus and it says that she did that dinner in honoring jesus that means she only did it for honoring a king because now she said i believe lord yes so this morning whatever you're going through let not that become everything don't even if you're doing very well let not that good become everything don't and ask him god i want you to be the first i want you to be second i want you to be third i want you to be continually continually be part of my life every turn i turn everywhere i go lord i see you as a king not as a guest who comes and leaves oh jesus we thank you lord we thank you lord so when you make that decision with the lord he will never put you as a second graded or second graded citizen but he always treats you as a son and daughter and anyone who is hearing the voice of me speaking these words even online or in the house if Jesus is not your savior you have not asked him to be your personal lord and savior i want you to make that decision and tell him lord i want to get away all from all the temporary desires that i have and that i know you as jesus no not just that i want to get all the distractions away i want to get away from all the dramas that i see and that i do i want to get away lord from all those things that are not putting you as a king and savior of my life this morning i make a decision lord to become king of my life because lord you care for me because lord you want to get involved with my life we thank you jesus god i invite you to my life heavenly father we want to thank you this morning lord as we have received this word god you transformed martha's life from nothing to everything where she was treating you as a guest but now she honors you as a king and lord this morning as we heard from martha mary and me lord my life i surrender it to your life into your hands oh god and the father do the things that you are famous to do to save and set us free and use us for your service this morning we are earnestly desiring longing for you we are putting lord ourselves o oh god almighty into your hands take us and use us and let there be a mighty glory unto your name in jesus name we pray amen and amen pastor please come forward and lead us into hallelujah thank you pastor tim for the wonderful word as we close our service today let us bow our heads down as we dismiss ourselves with the wonderful presence of god almighty as we conclude our time of worship here today let us go from this presence with god's blessings we are not going out of god's presence but we are just being dismissed from the corporate worship over here and i pray god that he will lead us 
I pray that may his blessings be upon us. I pray that may the Lord grant you wisdom. May the Lord protect you and your family. I pray that may he shower his grace and mercy upon each one of you. I pray that may the love of God, that agape love of God surround you. And may he fill your hearts with his divine peace that passeth all understanding. And I pray that may the light of the Lord shine brightly around you. So that as you walk throughout this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday again, may that light of Jesus illuminate your path, your way. May he remind you constantly that his word is the light for us. His word is the lamp for us. So may we continue to grow in the knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ. And we have this great assurance that as we move out of this place, we are beloved children of God. So may his favor be upon us. May his protection be upon us. And may he surround us with his love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Praise God Almighty. May you have a wonderful week. If you need prayers, do stay back. We would love to pray with you. Thank you once again. Have a fantastic week. Enjoy the nice weather. Uh, see someone new that you have not met in a while. God bless you all. Thank you so much.